Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So I've been inspired by a Blender modeling tutorial talking about this kind of structure. I use animation node to make it a 100% procedural. The most important thing is that you can freely change the amount of sphere or so. I call this circular wave mechanics because the principle of this animation looks very similar or even easier than the procedural pendulum that I've made in the past. If you're interested in, you can take a look to that as well. Anyway, today we're going to do this animation very quickly, so let's start. So let's hit the shift A and generate a UV sphere. And in the animation node, I'm going to hit Control A and search for distribute matrices. I'm going to change the type to circles. And then let's take a look with the 3D viewer. So now we have a circle being generated. And next step is I'm going to instance the sphere on each vertices of the circles. So let's take a in object instancer and object transform output and I'm going to activate all options here probably not the rotation I think it's meaningless so let's put the vectors into instances and objects into objects and next step is I'm going to hit copy for objects deep copy and in the sphere I'm going to add a material so this is it Next step is put the vectors into locations. So now we instance this object into all these locations. So let's hide these spheres. Or you can hit this screen button, or you can put the spheres into a disabled collection. Essentially, they are the same. Next step is I would like to generate some random scales. So let's take a vector from value. So now I use a single number to control x, y, z. And then I'm going to take a random number. I'm going to create the same amount of random number as the list length. So put the list length to the count and number to numbers. And you can change the maximum and the minimum as you wish. Just to get a little bit of variation should be enough. To animate these ball actions, I'm going to use a node which is called a ve uh, mix vectors. And it does not work if you directly put the vectors into the position because this node does not receive, does not accept multiple inputs. So we have to generate a loop for this. So let's select this distributed matrices, hit W goes to the right, and the loop through vectors. So now we generate a loop whose iterator is vectors, put the vectors into the place. And then let's hit this plus icon. And uh, let's take a vector list output. So now we use the new vectors to replace the old vector. And you can see nothing occurs at this moment. But if you change the vectors, then instantaneously you see something occurs. So this is the way to animate this. And obviously, you can definitely take a random number either within or outside the loop. So let's just uh, take this random number put the index into the seeds. Let's delete the list. So if you're doing everything outside the list, then you need to keep the as at the list. But if you're doing inside the loop, then you just put the index to the seed so that each each time you run this loop, the seed will be different. And so on. So by doing so you can generate a random displacement and so on. But if you would like to animate this thing, however, let's take a number of wiggle actually. And this is the correct way to do. And put the number to vectors. And by changing the evolution, then you're basically doing such kind of work. And you can also take a map range. So firstly, you can change the amplitude if possible. Uh, or you can take a map range. And because this amplitude is like a, actually it means the negative one to one to positive one. So let's put the input minimum to negative one and you can change the output minimum and the output maximum. So this is one way to do that. And by changing these evolutions, then you're animating that. So in this case, let's put the output minimum. So let's just switch the A and B. 
so that the maximum is outside, minimum is inside. So let's get a more kind of clear idea. So by changing the maximum, you can do this kind of stuff and you can change the evolution. So this is one way to do this. Uh, however, there's other ways. So now you can see all these balls are moving, but not connected to each other. So what if I would like to have a kind of coordination of all these spheres? Then what do you need to do is to instead of use the number uh, number wiggle, let's generate another type of noise, which is called uh, vector noise. And you can change the type of noises, like perlings and so on, or whatever kind of stuff. And it generates multiple numbers, as you can see. So let's put the vectors into the vectors. And then let's hit this in the iterator. Let's hit another plus icon. Let's call the float list. Because it actually output a float. I never know why, but see just how it works. So let's put the float list into the float list. So I'm going to use the float to the values. So now by changing the offset, it, it doesn't matter which offset you actually use. So now you can see the balls are more coordinated. And this is especially obvious if you increase the number of balls, then you can see it generates kind of um, a pattern. And you can change the frequencies so that it can be more jaggy, less jaggy, and so on. Perlin noise is very smooth, but you can also change the other types, which some of them, which turns to be more jaggy, so whatever, whatever stuff. So it's, it's possible to try, but I usually just choose perlins and you can just animate the offsets so that it wiggle. And it does not really matter which offset you actually use. Basically, they're doing the same. And you can, again, you can change the frequencies. And in this case, actually, um, minimum and the maximum still works. And basically, this is concept. The, another issue is how can I actually um, connect all these balls to the center? This is fairly easy. So we have these mixed vectors. So we're going to do everything within this loop. So let's generate a create vector list. And the one of them should be the A, which is the word origin. So you don't need to care. And we're going to use the position of our spheres as another point. So now if we connect these two points, then we have a spline to the center of the word. So let's take a spline from points. And then you can do a, you can create the splines inside the loop, but you need to instance the splines and so on. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to output the spline. And with it uh, outside the loop, I'm going to generate a curve object output and increase the bevel depths, hit the targets. So you can see we generated a splines. Be aware that all these splines are belongs to the same targets. So they will share the same shaders and so on. Uh, there are many different ways to get a random color with all these kind of things. Or you can even generate an individual splines. Um, you can watch my other tutorials about the splines and so on. I'm not going to detail for this, but so far this is the concept to generate the splines. And uh, basically this is it. Um, let's take the, that 25. But uh, in my animations, um, let's also change the bevel depth a little bit. In my animation, because I don't want to really plagiarize whatever, whatever stuff. So I changed the kind of styles a little bit. So I made another circles. So make sure the amount must be the same. And let's take a integral input. So that's, we're synchronizing two amounts. So let's hit that for 15. So now we have 15 balls. And then let's take another vector list. And this, the radius of new circles should be definitely smaller than 
the first one. So let's decrease its size a little bit and put the other vector into A. Or actually, it does not matter, you can actually switch them. So let's hit U, put the new vectors down. So these are essentially things that you can work. It does not matter with the orders. Essentially, they are the same. And uh, this is it. And then remember, if you change, if you put one vector into A, and the other vector should also be in a place. So now we there to say empties, and we are going to generate a. We're going to connect these vertices. Basically, just to generate a circles. So let's take a spline from points. And let's take another curve object. Put the spines into spines. Generate the circles. It should be the other one. So now basically this is it. And obviously you can use a simple fold input to connect the bevel depths. So this is it. Uh, you can organize the tree better in many different circumstances. I think I'm not going to go into too much details. So basically this is what you can do with animation. Uh, in the spline from points, you can take that cyclic so that it forms a full circles. And this is basically what I've done with, in my animation. There are many other ways that you can probably play with it, but so far this is it. Uh, I realized there's also one thing that uh, uh, I've done in my animation is that I offset the starting and the ending points. In this case, uh, I think it's easy just to take a transform vector. So let's take a rotation matrix. And by changing the Z, you can get an offset, get an angles from the starting and to the end. It's definitely doable. Or if you would like to rotate, either you rotate with the cameras. So let's take the Z and then let's hit it Control uh, Alt 0. So now we get our cameras. In the camera, let's change the transform. So you can either rotate your cameras to get a rotation, or uh, you can just uh, take another two transform vectors and use another compose matrix to rotate this same whole, uh, the whole thing. And to loop that essentially it's not hard. I've made a separate tutorial talking about how to animate the animation node because you cannot directly keyframe the animation node and so on. But I'm not going to dig into detail about all these kind of things. So I think this is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.